Good day, good day. Thank you for tuning in today to our podcast of Building Us Up. I'm your host, Apostle B.K. Seth Matthews, and I pray that something that is said today will cause you to become a better you. Now, without any further ado, let's get into the gospel sauce. Be blessed. Thank you for tuning in once again. I am your host, Apostle B. Keith. And today we're going to be talking about faith. And I know we're in a pandemic and there's so much uncertainty, uh, insecurity, and just indifference going on today. And so we just want to talk about something that is going to lift you up, something that's going to cause you a little comfort. And again, something that will cause you to become a better you. And we look at everything that's going on around us. We see death. We see hurt. We see uh, people uh, being hateful towards each other. Uh, we see a lot of things going on in the media as far as faith. I mean, uh, racism, uh, hatred, uh, just belittling of each other. And we got a, a few Karens out there. And I know that's a term that's been used to describe the type of person that's being a really outright racist. But I'll tell you one thing. My faith is in God. My faith in knowing that he will keep me. He will provide for me. He will make provisions for me. And in my family included. But we won't be long. But I just want to share a few things with you that I've come across with uh uh, researching about faith you know so many times we have faith in the wrong things we have faith in uh, more so in our materialistic things we have faith in and people that are with us we have faith in people and things that are around us we have faith in in anything but that which we should have faith in and sometimes it seems like we really leave uh, God out of the equation but I tell you one thing the Bible says, it says at some point we will all have to bow down on our knees, and confess that he is Lord. And before I go into today's lesson, I just want to uh, share this, uh, what I found. And it's, it's entitled, A Dad's Five Penny Promise Believed. And it says, a friend tells of overwhelming, overhear, a friend tells of overhearing two little girls, playmates, who were counting over their pennies. One said, I have five pennies. The other said, I have ten. No, said the first little girl. You have five cents, the same as I. But the second child quickly replied, My father said that when he came home tonight, he would give me five cents, and so I have ten cents. The child's faith gave her proof that which she did not see and she counted as it being already hers because it had already been promised by her father. And that's by Otter being an Otter being teaching teacher, excuse me. And so so many times we forget that our father has promised us things. And I know in this time where where there's a little racial indifference and a lot of us that are, and if you didn't know by now, I am African-American. A lot of us that are African-American are feeling some things and we're feeling some kind of way about some things that are going on in the media. Whether it be from the top, whether it be from the bottom, we're still feeling some kind of way. But one thing I do know is that I was promised something and I have yet to see God not come through on his promise that he's made to yet either me or anyone in my family. And I'm, I'm sure that there's more to come. But I just wanted to share that with you. I thought that was a little cute illustration. About the two little girls. And one thing about God. You, you call those things that are not as though they are. And you may not see it yet. But it's coming. And one day I do believe that we're going to have a level of peace. Whereas for the most part we will all get along. Because we won't have a choice but to all get along. We're moving right into the lesson and uh, going along with our... And we're going to have... Uh, I may not finish with this lesson. I may end up doing a part two. But I just wanted to get into it. I'm so excited about it. Because I have 
uh, taught this before, but for some reason, I just feel in my spirit that we have to, sometimes we have to go back to the basics and we have to uh, move, uh, not necessarily going back to that level like you're a child, but sometimes you got to go over it. You know, when you've, when you've been a, a doctor, a lawyer, or even, you know, a teacher, uh, for so long, for so many years, sometimes you have to go back to the beginning teachings that you had or the beginning notes that you've had to kind of do a refresher. And I feel like uh, that some of us, we need a little refresher because we're trying to be so intricate and deep about things moving uh, ahead in ministry that we forget about the basics. We forget about faith, one of them. We forget about belief, and they are not the same. But uh, we forget about those those basic principles of the Bible that, that we learned when we first became who we became in God. And so we end up being educated, but there's something still missing because we've we've forgotten where we came from. And one thing about it, I don't ever want you to be uh, at a point where you forget where you came from. So don't be afraid to go back over your old notes. Uh, don't be afraid to go into the garage and go into some of those boxes, go into your basement and go into some of those cases and look at some of those old notepads that you have that you wrote down. I know everybody's in the information age where they're writing every, typing everything on a computer. They're putting everything on a flash drive. But don't be afraid to go and get those notes out of the garage. Get those notes out of that old ripped up Bible that you had when you first started preaching or when you first went to Bible school. And it, the pages are all rusty. Some of them are stuck together. But yet, you're still able to find that one nugget that God had you circle or underline and that will bring you back up to speed to where you should be. And it will be very encouraging. God will always bring back to your remembrance those things and those which you have have come from so that you're able to remember, hey, you know what? I may be progressing, but I, I came from a place that I don't have to forget where I came from because I'm moving forward. Moving forward doesn't mean you have to... Uh, forget about where you came from now that don't mean you always walk around with your head looking back because you don't always you don't you don't have to look back to where you came from you just glance and say yeah i remember that that was when my that's when my faith was a little shaky but now my faith is on top my faith is where it needs to be i've got not only the, the faith the size of a mustard seed but now my faith is the size of a grape because we start somewhere so before i get ahead of myself i'm going to go ahead and get into the lesson so again we're talking about faith and I entitled it, Faith, you, have, you Gotta Have It. Because one thing about it, you gotta have faith. You can't even come to know who Jesus is without a conviction of faith. You had, that has to happen. So, But over in Habakkuk, uh, in uh, the second chapter, uh, first verse through the fifth verse. And I, I would like to read from the Amplified. Now, and then... It's a few. There's a few things that have been said in these scriptures that are also quoted in a, in a few other scriptures in the Bible, and I'll get into it. But uh, basically, uh, in Habakkuk, God was telling Habakkuk that to just live by faith, and this is one principle of life that was found in the Bible. Not only in Habakkuk, as I said, it was found four times. But I want to read this one because I like Habakkuk because God gave Habakkuk a command. Uh, in these uh, first five scriptures and he told him why he had it like that and it says yea also because he transgresseth by wine he is a proud man neither keep it at home who enlargeth his desire okay let me go back because I said I wanted to read from Amplified because I know sometimes people have a little trouble with the KJ, KJV but I don't but I want to read that so I'm going to start over I do apologize, but we are, uh, don't worry, we're going to get it. Uh, moreover, wine and wealth are treacherous. The proud man, the Chaldean invader, is restless and cannot stay at home. His appetite is large like that of shoal and his greed and like death and cannot be satisfied. He gathers to himself all nations and collects all people as if he owns them. Wow. Shall not all these victims of greed take up? A taunt against him and in scoffing derision of him say woe to him who piles up that which is not his 
How long will he possess it? And woe to him who loads himself with promissory notes for, for usury. And you know, I see we're being messed with tonight because for some reason, uh, that was verse 6 and 7. So we skipped that. So we're going to go ahead and read verse 4, 1 through 4. Oh, I know. I've been rash to talk about, talk out plainly this way to God. I will in my thinking stand up on my post of observation and station myself on the tower of fortress and will watch to see what he will say within me and what answer I will make as his mouthpiece to the perplexities of my complaint against him. Habakkuk wasn't feeling too good about this because he 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 wasn't he wasn't feeling the Chaldeans at all. I'm not gonna preach, but I'm gonna tell y'all exactly what's going on. Uh, and the Lord answered me and said, "Write the vision and engrave it so plainly upon tablets that everyone who passes may be able to read easily and quickly as he hastens by. So even if you're running by, you're gonna be able to read it." Uh, for the vision is yet for an appointed time and it hastens to, to the end fulfillment. It will not deceive or disappoint though it tarry wait earnestly for it because it surely will come and it will not be, uh, be it will not be behind hand on its appointed day. Look at the proud. His soul is not straight or right within him, but the rigid just and the uncompromisingly righteous man shall live by faith and in his faithfulness. Jesus. Then it says more over in wine and, and what we read earlier about the Chaldean being treacherous. And so out of all of the things that were going on, uh, God said, write the vision so that the just will know they will live by faith. They live by faith. And it's faithfulness. The faithfulness. Now, there are other scriptures that go in and talk about the just shall live by faith. We got Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3, 10 and 11, and Hebrews 10 and uh, 38. Now, let me see here. Habakkuk, we see uh, the different difference between the lives of the unjust and the just. The unjust are puffed up and live by their own self-sufficiency, but the just live by faith. They are confidence in God. To them, faith is more than a philosophy of life. It is the very principles of life. The just shall live his whole life by faith. He's saved by his faith. He's kept by faith and he lives by faith. His faith shall be tried many times in many different ways. But faith will always be vindicated. Let's look at 1 Peter uh, 1 and 7. First Peter 1 and 7. Okay. So that the genuineness of your faith may be tested, your faith, which is infinitely more precious than the perishable gold, which is tested and purified by fire. This proving of your faith is intended to, re to redound to your praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, is revealed. So being tested in many ways it's 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 like a the the gold a jewel a precious jewel being tried by the fire and i've uh i've only seen it done on tv never seen it up front but when you see gold tried by fire and it's still gold a lot of things that i try by fire it comes out soot because everything within it has been burned to a crisp there's no oxygen in it there's no uh, no other type of minerals, no nothing, nothing left but burned soot. Even paper, it's burned and 
it just turns to, so it just blows like chaff in the air. And uh, if you've ever seen the chaff being uh, shaken from wheat, it just blows in the wind. So that's kind of how what fire does when it just burns them to a crisp. Even, uh, even the body, when it's burned, the bones burn. Everything burns down but the teeth. They can, they can only identify your body with your dental records. Now, just, just for a moment, think if you don't have any teeth. You know, because sometimes people have, and it's kind of funny, but then it's not. But you would have no teeth, so they will not be able to identify you. So, think about that. Uh, so, with your with your faith being tried many times, First Peter one and seven tells us it's for an intended purpose. Mm -hmm. But it also says your faith will always be vindicated because it is more equal, more than equal to any occasion. Your faith can stand the test of time. If you have that genuine faith, faith knows how to wait on the Lord and it always is victorious. Don't you ever worry about being victorious as long as you have faith. Faith defines reason and it moves mountains. Now, faith does not always face facts. It never gives up. Faith says God is working out his perfect will in my life and I can't wait. I can wait endure and suffer faith does not make anything easy but it does make all things possible okay so let's go in a little further so what is faith i like this part hebrews 11 and 3 tells us now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by it, elders obtain good testimony. By faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things that are visible. The, the Bible tells us that, that God spoke those things. And after he spoke those things, and he saw his things that he spoke into creation, he said, it is good. It is good. So look at that. And when he said he was going to make man, he, he took the, the dust of the earth and made man. And then from man, he made woman. He took a rib and made woman out of the man. And he said those two, especially those two, are good. Now, faith is the substance, the title deed of things hoped for. Your faith is your title deed to eternal life. Just as the title deed is evidence of real estate. So your faith is evidence of your eternal estate in God. You have an estate. You have chattel. You're not chattel, but you have chattel. You've got uh, some land in God. You've got some, some property. You've got some things that are theirs that, that are yours. Whether you see them now or not, they're there. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 4.18. 2 Corinthians 4.18. Okay, and it says, since we, dis since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that are visible are temporal, brief, and fleeting. But the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. Look at that. Now, as far as faith is concerned, the things that you don't see, those are things that are everlasting. Those things that are, are, are permanent. I, I tell, I can't see air, but I have faith that it's there. I don't see the breath going through my body. And just as, just as God breathed uh, breath into the nostril of Adam, I believe that's what he does to us every morning. Especially those mornings when you beat those, beat the alarm clock, when you beat the, the your yelling kid, you, that breath, you don't see it, but it's there. We don't have to see God to believe God is there. A lot of times when you see stuff, that it, it is really is temporal because it, it, it dissipates, it deteriorates, it goes away. Most of the stuff that we can see is gone. 
few points on this faith faith is the substance i think one faith is taking god his word and asking no question faith is knowing that all things work together for the good of those who love god to those who are called according to his purpose that's Romans 8 28 faith does not believe that all things are good or that all things work well it does believe that all things good or bad work together for the good of them that love god so there's a purpose for, for everything in your life, whether good or bad. Because I guarantee you most of the stuff that was bad, uh, I guarantee it was something that was, for the most most of us, something that was horrific that caused us to come to God. I don't know, it could have been a death in the family. It could have been you getting sick. You know, and on, on the flip side, that sounds kind of kind of bad, but you know what, sometimes things have to get bad to get your attention. It's just like when you're taking a course. You know, a lot of times we take for granted that we're able to pass a course and do things like that. Uh, but I guarantee you, once you get that first low grade, you're like, wait, 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 I gotta, I gotta get on my P's and Q's. That, that, that's, that got my attention. So sometimes God has to get our attention. And these are things that are, that are, uh, causative of us coming closer to him, not farther away. We, with our flesh, we allow things to take us farther away from God and closer to that problem. But in essence and in general and, and, and for all educational purposes, those things are supposed to bring us closer to God. So we're able to, to, to fall more in love with him, to be able to trust him more, to love him more, and to be able to allow him to provide for us more. Faith has two sides. One side has to do with the intellect. It is an intellectual conviction that Jesus Christ is God. The other side has to do with the will. It is a, a volitional surrender of will to Jesus Christ as master. This is seen when Thomas believed and confessed. He said this. He said, my Lord, my God, my Lord, this was a volitional surrender. My God, this was an intellectual conviction. Together you have the saving faith, which saving faith is an intellectual conviction that Jesus is God and a volitional surrender to him as Lord or master of your life. By faith, the mind trusts in God and the heart responds to the love of God. Uh, they will surrender. They will, uh, they will submit to the commands of God and the life obeys in the service of God. Okay. So your will submits to the commandments of God and the life obeys the service of God. Okay, next, the faith, faith is paradoxical, which means it goes beyond reason. It doesn't make sense, you know, to most people, especially those of us that how can you believe that God is going to do something for you that big when you've never seen that, that God that you talk about? It believes without understanding why. <laughs> Watch this. Uh, it sings in prison, as Paul did. It glorifies in tribulations. It chooses to suffer afflictions. It accepts all things as part of God's will. Let's look at Hebrews. And let's see. What was that? Hebrews. Uh, Eleven twenty-five. Let's see what that says. It says this: because he preferred to share the uh, oppression, suffer the hardship, and bear the shame of the people of God, rather than to have the fleeting enjoyment of a sinful life. And watch this. Let's go to Acts. Acts 20, 16, 25. This is a very familiar passage of scripture. But about midnight, as Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. I'm going to read the next scripture. It says, suddenly there came a great earthquake so that the very foundation of the prison were, were shaken. And at once all the doors opened and everyone's shackles were unfastened. So Paul and Silas singing and praying in prison, praising God, caused some miraculous things to happen. Now, I, I'm going to say this because I believe the prisons were a little bit different. 
back then. I'm not saying that it can't happen these days because I can believe I believe anything can happen with God. But for the most part, these prisons were made out of the old clay bricks they had. They put some doors up. You know, they had to. I'm not, I don't know if it, were, it was metal or whatever. I'm pretty sure they had discovered something to hold them in. But it was mostly, it was all one ground. It wasn't two levels. And they were thrown in these, these big dungeon-like cells. And the Bible says that they began to sing and pray, and pray with the hymns that the foundation began to shake. Something about the singing and the faith triggered something with God that he began to shake and shaking uh, the foundation and shake the prisons that the doors and everything open and I believe somewhere oh, oh, before this it said this, the, the guard was even asleep so I remember that it puts me in a memory of some movies where you know the uh, guard would go to sleep be leaned back on the chair with his feet propped up on the desk keys hanging off the side and then somehow uh, the prisoners will be trying to get the keys quietly out the, uh, the sheriff's hook, uh, hip so that they could open up the prison. You know, okay, just imagine yourself going through that, but just even imagine yourself in a prison and you start singing the praises of God and the very foundation or just for the sake of this, the door latch just opens and everybody sleeps. And you're able to just walk up out of there. So watch. 27. I know it's not part of the lesson. It says, when the jailer startled out of his sleep. Yep, see, he was asleep. Saw the prison doors were open. He drew his sword and was on the point of killing himself because he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shout, shouted, don't harm yourself. We're all here. And the jailer called for the lights and rushed in and trembled and there and terrified and fell before Paul and Silas. And he began to do what Paul and Silas was doing. He brought his faith up. So faith is paradoxical. Now, this is something that we, we need to understand. You're not born with this type of faith. Okay? This faith come this faith comes later as you when you become when you, re, when you uh, accept salvation. And see, it comes by hearing the word of God. The, this is why we are commanded to preach the gospel to every creature that they may hear and believe in Jesus. Now, I would like to have, let me show you something here. Give me one second here. I've got just a few more minutes left, and I know we're going to have a part two. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can find it. If I can't find it, I won't worry about it. Because I, I want to talk about the measure of faith. Go down a little bit, and we want to. Thought I had this ready for you. I apologize for that, but if not, I'll talk about it on the next letting lesson because we're gonna end up having a part two. But faith, we're all given a measure of everything that we need, and that's one thing about God. But unto everyone, he has given us grace according to the measure of gift of Christ. So we all come to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son unto perfect man. Okay. Let's look at Ephesians 4 and 7. Okay, so he says, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called 
Okay, so this is this is uh in the book of Ephesians uh chapter four. Okay, and that's different measures of, of grace with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the Lord. Uh, in the bond of peace there is one body one spirit even as we call and one hope for your calling one lord one faith one baptism one god one father of all who is above all and through all and in you all but unto every one of us is given according to the measure of, of the gift of christ wherefore he says we have ascended upon high and led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men now that he has sinned what is but uh what is it but that he also ascended, for, descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended into the same also ascended up far above all the heavens that he may feel all things. Okay. So he gave us a measure of faith. And I'm going to find it because I believe I'm, there's another scripture about it. But anyway, we don't, we're not born with this faith that we have. This faith comes to us as we have been convicted we have given our life to god and then we are when we accept uh christ and we receive salvation then we're given a measure of things because we all have a measure of faith we have a measure of love and then some of us are those things they're uh developed you know because even christ told him say if you have the faith the size that's just the minimal amount of faith you know, and I do believe there are people out there that have the gift of faith that will be able that are able to, you know, help others through situations that would normally seem, you know, impossible to have faith in. So uh, just understand we're not born with that faith. Um, it has to be preached to you. You have to hear the word in order for you to hear the word. You gotta sit where the word is being preached. We're gonna go into a little bit of the importance of faith, and then we're gonna move and we'll start. We'll do part two at another time. So the shield of faith is a vital part of Christian armor. You put on the whole armor of God because the Christian life is a warfare, a spiritual conflict. As Paul names different parts of the Christian armor, he comes to the shield and emphasizes the importance by saying, above all, taking the shield of faith. So let's go look at Ephesians. Uh, let's see. I believe it was Ephesians 6 and 10. And I like to read out scriptures. I'm not really big. I can quote scriptures. But I like to go to the scriptures and read them because then uh, you're able to get it. Uh, and it says, finally, my brother, be strong, be strong, Lord, in the power of, my, my, of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the, in the evil day, and having all done, having done all to stand, stand. Therefore, having your loins girt uh, about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shall with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all things taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me. That utterance may be given unto me. That I may open my mouth boldly. To make known the mysteries of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in bonds. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Period. Okay. 
Okay. So he said, above all, taking the shield of faith. For with the shield of faith, nothing can hurt you. And all these things, we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. Romans 8 and 37. Uh, the importance of faith is seen in that, one, you cannot be saved without faith. There's that conviction of uh, Christ pricks your heart or something uh, pricks your heart. It's Christ, but something around, something in that situation right then pricks your heart through Christ. And it makes you say, wait a minute, I need help. I tried this on my own. And, and, and I know in most cases it is people said, I've tried everything else. Now I'm going to try God as if God was a last resort. Well, sometimes God is a last resort. Giving your life to Christ is a last resort because you have tried everything. But I would hope that a lot of people out there were just happy one day and say, you know what? I'm happy, but I need a little more. And then they found Christ, even in the midst of their good situation. And, you know, and God just began to bless them more. Two, you cannot live victoriously over the world without faith. Uh, 1 John 5 and 4, you cannot please God without faith. Hebrews 11, 6, you cannot pray without faith. You cannot have peace with God without faith. You cannot have joy without faith. You are justified by faith, but not by works. Okay, faith works if you work it, but you don't get faith by works. You get it? Okay, you are justified by faith and not by works. You live by faith. You are made righteous by faith. There it is. Christ dwells in your heart by faith. The Holy Spirit is received by faith. That's another level. And whatever is not from faith is sin. It's Faith is important because it honors God. And one thing about God, he always honors faith. I'm going to end that on I'm going to end that on that note, uh, and we'll we definitely will have a part two on this lesson. And I hope that I said something that was very encouraging to you thus far, that will cause you to rethink uh, faith if you have been contemplating whether or not it's something that is real or something that that it actually produces a uh, a lasting result or even a different re result. Because so many times we keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, expecting a different result. And that's naturally and spiritually so. And so many times we, we overlook the fact that, hey, we have, a, we, have a, uh, we have an avenue. We have another road we can take for change. We don't keep going down the same old boring road or detrimental road that's leading us to those same brick walls. If we would just allow ourselves to come to a level of faith that produces more faith because faith begets faith hang around faithful people hang around faith people uh people that not just faithful people because sometimes people are faithful in doing wrong but you know what i mean spiritually faithful people that are there trying to uplift you trying to bring you up trying to make sure you reach your goal in God and so understand that God is there for you he's waiting with his arms open wide I know we're living even though we're living in this time that we're living in God has done some tremendous things in spite of things that doors have been open for us for some that would seemingly be closed in any other given time of of their lives or even their uh, situation you know but don't don't think it all bad you know because we're gonna make it we're going to make it through this. Uh, this is our time to move forward. This is our time to live. And, you know, more than ever, I counted a blessing that even though some some churches were not able to open, many are still not open, but God has given us an avenue that we're able to reach not only the, the, the flock and the sheep that we were, the parishioners that were, so, uh, were a, uh, called to listen to and be over in our communities, God has given us avenues where we can reach people across the globe. And never have I seen the, the airways flooded with so many, you know, people uh, preaching the gospel, uh, sharing an encouraging word, uh, things like that going across the, the globe with the Internet, even on uh, a lot of the, the social media websites. The, uh, they've been flooded. Yeah, and sometimes it gets a little bit overwhelming. And uh, but that's where that scripture comes in. All things work for the good of them 
that love God and are called according to his purpose. That's where that comes in at. Because what may have seemed bad during this time for one person turns out to be a great blessing for the next person. So I want you all to continue to be blessed. I want you to continue to read your, read your word, continue to study your word, and understand that we are here for you. Uh, please, uh, on the next uh, podcast, we're going to have the chat box open so you're able to chat. You're able to uh, uh, give your notes, a answer your questions. Uh, we will have our uh, uh, email address up there as well so you can send us questions we want to be here for you uh, building us up foundation is something that God has given us to be able to help our brothers and sisters get through we're looking to become a a multifaceted not-for-profit that is able to not only help those that are local but help those that are uh, global as well because we want to be a great blessing because God has called us to some nations and we have to be ready to receive that which is for our assignment so again Thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, downloading. Thank you for uh, leaving a good message. Thank you for following us. Uh, share this message with anyone you know that may need it. And understand that uh, we are here. We are here with you. We, under, we understand what's going on. And, and a lot of times we want to help people financially, but sometimes it's not feasible. But we can help you with prayer. We can help you with a, a word of encouragement. We can help you with a, a spiritual hug. I know a lot... A lot we're not hugging these days because of what's going on but we know we can help you in any way we can uh that god has blessed us to help you with in that time and at some point we will be able to help people with uh, finances so but uh, until then we're going to pray with you we're going to give you the word of god we're going to give you everything we have spiritually so that we're able to help each other grow and help god's kingdom grow so god keep you god bless you understand that God's best is yours. I want you to uh, walk in it. Lo uh, excuse me. Expect it. Look for it. And walk in it. And and it's yours. So God bless you. God keep you. Keep us in your prayers. This is Apostle B. Keith signing off. And I will see you on the next. God bless you. <laughs>